What's up? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Cody Myler, and I am back. I am back. You know, just like Mace used to say back in the day. I tell you what, it's been six weeks since my last podcast. Can you believe that? Uh, so much has been going on. I think the last podcast was, uh, I, I was looking earlier, I think it was September 5th, okay? And Today's November 20th, 2019. First of all, this year has been flying by. It's insane. It's almost Thanksgiving. Can you believe that? Um, but it's been six weeks about since the last podcast, and so much has happened during those six weeks. That's why I just I had to just go ahead and take a little time off the podcast and focus on everything else I had going on. So um, <clears throat> let me tell you. In those six weeks, I had to host NACA, the National Athletic Keto Association, so I'm the founder of NACA, and we had to have the first uh, ketogenic or carnivore bodybuilding competition in Dallas, October 12th. So I was hosting that, doing all, getting that ready, and then two weeks after that, I spoke at the Resilient Brilliant Balance event for Allie Miller and her book tour. I spoke with Sean Wells as well, and so also I was kind of the one leading the the pack on that event um man <laughs> so much work goes into hosting an event like i something at that caliber i i tell you i kind of underestimated that a little bit definitely learned and so that way i know what to do for next year in 2020 especially with naca and certain things that that we did there uh but it was definitely a huge success Let's see. Then uh, we went to Mexico, and we went to Mexico. It was my birthday. It, it was my birthday. Uh, mine's November seventh. My wife's is November seventeenth, and so I turned thirty-nine. Uh, she'll kill me if I say how old she turns. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do it. Uh, but uh, I went ahead. Uh, well, I mean, we we went to Mexico and and. That was a much needed uh, vacation. I really haven't had, you know, when I go on vacations, a lot of them, you know, it's just like fun. I, I, I never am really drained. Uh, like, oh my God, like I really need some time, a reset. This one, I definitely needed a reset, needed to unwind a little bit, and totally did that. We went to um, Playa del Carmen and just really enjoyed uh, the Hilton, bought this resort down there, and they've been remodeling it. And it's absolutely gorgeous, all inclusive, and uh, no kids, adult only resort. So that was great. Uh, and yeah, it was it was really cool. Really enjoyed the town. We went and ate at a restaurant called a Lux, and it was inside a cave. And that was that was really cool. Really cool place for sure. So, yeah, between NACA, uh, Brilliant and Resilient and Balanced, Mexico, uh, me turning 39, so this is my last year in my 30s. Ugh. But I tell you, physically, I feel like I'm in my 20s, especially in this last year. I, uh, this, this last year is really, uh, with all the changes I've made with my diet and my workouts and everything, and um, you know, some of you guys may know I have a spondylosis, a, f a fractured lower back, something that will never heal. So um, by making all those changes, my lower back is really, really um, – Totally, the the inflammation and everything, the pain that I normally feel on a, a consistent basis has has definitely reduced a lot. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's uh, here in Dallas. I don't know what it's like where you live, but here in Dallas, it's in about the mid 60s right now. It's been around the 70s the last couple of days. It's been pretty nice. Uh, I think we got a cold front coming though. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, hey, I lived in Missouri all the way till I was 20, what, 24, and I knew when I left Missouri, I said I'm either moving to California, Arizona, Texas, or Florida. That that th those were my places I was going, um, and and um, I ended up. In Texas, that's where I got my coaching job. But I, I said I want to go someplace warm. That's <laughs> I was tired of the snow. I was tired of the winters. I am not a cold weather person. I love to go and be in the snow for you know three four days. But I want to know I can leave and get get someplace else. At least someplace that's around the uh, fifty. You know something like that. I need that. 50 to 78 that's that's my that's my happy happy area right there 
Um, so, man, let's see. What else? What do I got going on? You know, I, uh, if you don't know, I am actually um, going live right now on my Myler Flex Instagram. And once I switch later on to the actual topic, so today I'm going to talk about how to build muscle while fasting. And so that's going to be a topic that I'm going to touch on later. Uh, and then when I do that, I'm going to switch over to my Fit Keto Cowboy IG. But I'm live right now. And uh, if you guys ever have questions, just follow me on those IG accounts and just go ahead and ask away, and I'll try, try to get to them. Um, so let's see. What am I doing now? What, what's my plans? What's going on right now? I actually started on Monday my Bulk 100 program. It's my Phase 1 Bulk 100, so 100 days of bulking. Um, in my next YouTube video, I'm going to go a lot, a lot in, more in depth on the type of supplements I'm taking, the style of workouts that I'm doing now, what food that I'm eating, how much am I taking in, you know, all that good stuff. Um, so, I and the reason why I'm doing it. It's not so much because it's winter time and this is the time you bulk because you can, you know, put put a hoodie on or something. It's more um, I I'm I'm going to go compete next year. I, I can't compete in my own uh, association in NACA, but I am going to go and compete in another show uh, someplace. Um, I'm kind of thinking right now. Maybe the Europa in Phoenix, you know, um, maybe someplace else, maybe just stick closer to home. Um, some of the shows I really want to do are they're kind of bad timing compared to some, you know, like I'm going to host another NACA bodybuilding show two times next year, and they kind of fall around that same time. So I can't be. Uh, hosting those and then being in the middle of a prep or the end of the prep, the most crucial part. So, um, still trying to figure out what show that might be. But hey, being six foot six, and I'm going to go into the men's physique. Um, I, you know, I want to gain about another ten more pounds before that happens of muscle, and then I'll start leaning out. So, that is what. I am currently doing and I'm currently getting back to real life kind of a steady pace just for a little bit you know getting to do my podcast on Wednesdays filming um, you know everything for my for my YouTube channel and my vlogging and um, you know doing training all my clients training my clients at the gym training all my clients online focusing on the gym getting members all that good stuff so just kind of I'm, I'm actually kind of happy to get back to a, a normal pace <laughs> so um, right now let's go ahead and let's break for a commercial do you like fresh pressed juices if so check out raw roots juices spelled ra roots they are located in dallas texas but can ship nationwide so if you're looking for juice cleanse or a daily juice use this code myler flex for 15 percent off Okay, if you're an OG to this podcast, you know what's next. What the fitness? That's right, what the fitness. You know what? I really have only one thing to talk about, and that one thing has been a big, big, big topic the last month. It's been huge, and um, it's really interesting to see all the studies now that are coming out, and that is the game changers it's the game changers uh the documentary that's now out on netflix uh let me tell you that has taken the fitness industry by storm and it's definitely uh lit some fires <laughs> and um it's interesting so if you guys don't know what the game changers documentary is about it's about how all these athletes now are vegan and they are trying to show how you can compete at a high level being a vegan athlete and then they're trying to say how much more healthier it is and etc etc now um, I'm sure you can kind of tell by the uh, tone in my voice I'm not the um, fan of the vegan diet um, 
I, I got multiple reasons, my own experiences. Now, what I am a fan about and what I do support highly, and this is this is the only thing that I have the the hang up about is is about the the animal cruelty and stuff like that now that i am totally on board with i totally feel that um things are handled inhumane for these animals and i feel there's, there should be animal rights um the way things are done and uh, and uh, there's been huge and massive steps on how that has happened and you know things that have changed over the years and PETA has really come in and and helped that um, you know my sister she owns a very well-known um, animal rescue over in Rhode Island called the uh, Sweet Binks and you know uh, I totally support everything about that uh, I have probably some of the most amazing animal stories that I, you guys, if, if I just, I could do a podcast about some of my animal stories alone, and you would be amazed. From monkeys to possums uh, to black panthers, it, it's crazy. And that's just living in, in Fordland, Missouri, okay? So, um, skunks. And when I'm saying it's not like stories of like, oh, yeah, I, I was walking in, in, you know, out in the pasture or something. And all of a sudden I came across a skunk. No, I'm talking about we actually had skunks as pets. OK, to that extent. Um, and so I, I totally I, I'm not a hunter. You know, I'm not I, I've never hunted a day in my life. Um, it's not that I'm 100% against it. Uh, I think there's a place uh, for that. I don't believe in just going out, especially like, um, you know, these African safaris and stuff where they're shooting rhinos and lions. That's that's straight bullshit. I totally don't agree with that. Um, but then, you know, guys just going out and killing just to kill for no reason. I don't agree with that. But, you know, for guys that are going out and they they go kill a deer. And that's for their family to eat on for, you know, the year or whatever it may be. Get some venison. Um, you know, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Um, I think there's certain ways it's, it's done. So as far as the game changers goes, that, that could be probably the only thing that I will sit back and agree with. Um, but as far as being the vegan athlete, I'll just give you some experiences or examples. So here in Dallas, uh, I've trained oh man at least hundreds <laughs> i'm not lying of um indian people from the indian culture and i would say most of them 80 percent of them are vegan and it's really sad and when i have them and how deconditioned they are when i first start off with them and i do everything in my power to try to get them to change a little bit from vegan to vegetarian to try to get some eggs and cheese at least at the bare minimum but I at least try to get them to try to be more pescatarian to at least eat fish and let me tell you from seeing the the, the change from going from a vegan to a pescatarian and adding some good quality protein to your diet and what they have done uh, physically and their performance and how they feel, it's bar none. It, it, it doesn't even come close. It doesn't even come close. And so I just firsthand have seen these people coming in being so deconditioned. They, they, they and, I, and it's not like I'm like, okay, they started off with me and I never gave that opportunity for them to be a vegan or a vegetarian. And then we trained for a while. Um, and I, it's not like I didn't give that opportunity for them to uh, get better as a vegan or a vegetarian oh no there's plenty of them that we had to butt heads about but once they started adding just a little bit of meat into their diet weekly just a little bit that's when that's when changes start happening for them and 
there's so many studies now. You know, in in the game changers, they do this deal where the guys they have these these college athletes and they they have them draw blood after they eat a regular burrito and then uh, a black bean burrito, a, 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 a vegan burrito, and they they shake it and all this stuff. Guys, that is so much bull crap. Actually, do yourself a favor and go follow Dr. Fit and Fabulous on Instagram. She's a doctor. She's an OBGYN. She actually does the same thing. She draws her own blood, puts it through the machine that shakes it up and separates the plasma and the blood and all that good stuff. And she shows you, you know, here's why I'm eating, here's what I'm doing, and it's crystal clear even even after eating meat. Um, it's it's crazy. So um, all these <laughs> studies, like I, and what what's so, like we've already heard how the director James Cameron has 140 million dollars invested in a pea protein product. So of course they're going to try pushing the hell out of this to sell this pea protein. Um, but there's not one, not one of those athletes that were on that documentary that started their journey as a vegan. They gained what they are today by eating meat and including protein in their diet. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, they're going to go be a vegan. And they think that's the reason why their performance has changed. It's 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 ridiculous. It really is. And um, there's people like Sean Baker that's putting out crazy studies right now. There's actually going to be a documentary coming out around Thanksgiving called The Game Changers Debunked. I was trying to be a part of that. Just I was gone and didn't have a chance getting video sent in. But, um, yeah, that that's coming out soon. So I just – I tell you what, um, it's it's – it's mind-boggling, you know, how much misinformation was in that Game Changers documentary. Um, and, and, and like I said, I think if anybody's going to scale anything down as far as possible, at least, at least go and be a pescatarian. At, le- at the bare, bare, bare minimum, be at least a pescatarian, okay? Um, so that's what I want to say. That's my little rant about the Game Changers Uh I I I I do agree with eating some, you know, totally. I'm not I'm not saying don't eat vegetables. And I'm totally for that. But um yeah, I'm just going to leave it right there cuz I could keep going down a little rabbit hole and uh I don't want to keep doing that. We're already about 20 minutes into this show. So, uh with that being said, now it's time for all right, so today's beer of the week really isn't one of those jams that you hear in the gym and it just gets you pumped up. It's more one of those jams just kind of like, okay, maybe maybe just kind of getting in the mood, getting the mind right, just kind of whatever. But I've been feeling this. I've been feeling this song for the last three or four weeks, and this song is Circles by Post Malone. Go ahead and enjoy. All right. That was Post Malone Circles. I tell you what, I've been feeling that song the last few weeks. I, I don't know what it is about, but man, I've really been feeling that song. Hey, I want to say hi to everybody. If you are just now tuning in on my Myler Flex, or I'm sorry, uh, I was just on the Myler Flex Instagram. I was live on there, did the, the first part of this podcast, but now I'm on the Fit Keto Cowboy IG. So, uh, how you guys doing? Don't forget to go ahead, ask questions if you have questions, and I'll go ahead and answer them for you. But let's go ahead and continue with the show and uh, just kind of catch you guys up over here. Uh, I, I've been talking about uh, the the whole uh, what the fitness topic today was about the game changers. So if you didn't get to listen to that earlier, either go back to the Myler Flex IG account, watch my live, or you can go ahead and listen to this podcast uh, later on on it on all other platforms. So today's topic that I want to talk about, I actually had somebody 
um, suggest this. And I was like, you know what? That's a good one. I, I, I had about five or six suggestions in the last couple days. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this one um, just because I'm kind of uh, going through the the uh, process right now. And, and so what I'm going to talk about is how to build muscle and still incorporate fasting. Okay? Um, and that's something that I tell you what a lot of, <laughs> especially a lot of men, and uh, guys that are a little bit more uh, muscular, they they're like, you don't you don't want to do that. Like they're scared to incorporate fasting into trying to build muscle. And so I'm just going to go over kind of um, my own experience in this last year with with that, and then I'm going to go ahead and give you some some more scientific tips and and tricks and you know we can really dive deep into the mTOR and all that good stuff um, when it comes to fasting with muscle building and and I'll touch on a little bit a little bit of that as we go along in this podcast but um, right now let me just go ahead and, and give you kind of a recap of this last year and kind of an eye-opening experience that I've had myself when I started incorporating intermittent fasting it, it was about November, is a year ago this time. And so, you know, before I kind of had that whole idea, you know, okay, fasting is great if you're trying to lose weight and all that good stuff. Um, but, you know, you're trying to build muscle, you're trying to get a little bit more size on you. Like, that's not really something that you'd want to do. And I start really diving down a little bit more into what what does fasting really do for you is for your for your body and everything and one of the things that really caught my attention was how much it increases your human growth hormone and how much it, in, it increases your testosterone and I, that just right there i was like okay so if if you can increase it by that much, like by fasting consistently for a good four days, I'm not saying, you know, not eating for four days. I'm saying at least implementing a 12 or a 12 to a 16 hour fast for four days straight can increase your human growth hormone to about three to four hundred times more. And that's that's insane. OK, and it can even skyrocket even higher the longer that you go. So one of the um, ideas about building muscle and building strength, and I do want to separate those two here in a little bit, is that you have to eat in such this high caloric surplus to be able to build muscle. So I said, okay, I, at the time this year I was 255 pounds, uh, and I said, I want to give this a shot. And I was only eating around 18 to 2,000 calories a day. Now, mind you, I'm six foot six. At the time, I was 255 pounds. I went and had my BMR tested, said that my baseline was 2,200 calories a day. So I was eating, even at, let's just keep math easy, 2,000 calories, I was still a negative of 200 calories because my resting metabolical rate was 2,200, okay? You know, 2,200 some change. So, then when I started working out, I burnt about 3,200. Yeah, you know, I was working out pretty intense, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm in a pretty big deficit, you know, a thousand, you know, anywhere between 800 to 1,200 calories a day for about six months. Now, I got down to 220, and... What was crazy is when I, and I had a DEXA scan at that time. And so when I went and re-scanned again six months later, I was like, I, what, I mean, obviously I already knew I lost body fat. That was a given. But I was like, okay, did I lose any muscle? Because I was implementing a minimum of a 12-hour fast every single day. Normally, I hit about 13 and a half to 14 hours. Um... I, I wasn't big on going to 16 hours. There may have been a few days that I did, but normally uh, it was about 13 and a half hours. Okay, and I always did my workout fasted. And what I saw is that I still gained three and a half pounds of muscle 
at a huge caloric deficit for six months. And so I was just like, wow, like I can't believe the, that I still gained muscle. I didn't lose, I didn't just maintain, I gained. So I'm going in and I'm just diving in and just really learning a lot more about fasting and, and understanding how can I really implement this and build more muscle. And so, hey, how you doing? And so, um, I want to kind of go over some tips and things that you might be sitting there and I want to kind of debunk a few little things or some some uh, ideas that might be out there and so first of all you know I have people ask well what what truly is a fast okay well there's I mean there's multiple fast out there there there's so many of them out there um, and, and you know you have your your religious fast and those are different but let's just talk about right now let's just talk about your fast for like weight loss or you know or, or the muscle building you know that type of deal um, with those fasts you have to have it's not even considered a fast until you've at least hit about 12 hours you know that that's your bare minimum that you can even consider a fast is 12 hours a lot of people are doing a 16 8 there's many people that do the extended fast they're like you know uh, uh, 48 hour 72 hour fast um, but that's not something you do all the time that's every once in a while um, and huge huge benefits from that especially the autophagy and all that stuff so huge benefits from doing that um, hey but um, you know, so that that's one thing I, I want to tell everybody is you at least bare minimum have to get 12 hours in, okay? At least that. So where the next question I get is, okay, Sam fasting and what what or when should I break my fast? So we kind of know, okay, when is between 12 to 16 hours? So, as far as muscle building goes and incorporating fasting, you, you can really kind of manipulate a little bit. So, when you think about the old school, it's not even old school, I mean, it's, it's, it's science, it shows that after a workout, if you can take some complex carbs to bump that insulin up, that helps with building muscle okay you can take that same exact philosophy because after a workout you are you, you, you are so um, insulin sensitive after your workout and after a fast you are crazy sensitive in it sensitive insulin sensitive okay so it's almost like you're getting a two for one. It's in your favor. If you can work out fasted and then break your fast after your workout. And what you want to do, what you want to break that fast with is something like a, um, you know, something that has a little bit of glucose in it, like maybe dextrose. Um, you want to get some salt, a little bit of fructose. Like we're talking 10, 15 grams of fructose, about 20, 30 grams of maybe dextrose and some salt. And that can really help with your muscle building as you're fasting. You're, that like doubles. So if you just took a regular person that went and worked out and then had carbs right after their workout and that pushes their insulin, they're getting like one times. You're getting two because you're so insulin sensitive after the workout, you're insulin sensitive from after fasting. It's like a double whammy. Okay. Now there's been some really good products that's come out in the last uh, year or so. Archie Type has um, uh, their their pre sup, and it, it it's made with um, pea proteins and or pea starch. I'm sorry, a uh, pea starch and some other things that you can take before your workout. And so I think that um, that's something that you because that 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 pea starch doesn't necessarily raise your insulin too much. Okay, so I think you can that and normally people that use that are doing more of a targeted keto approach. Um, 
So that's definitely something you can also do as well is take that before your workout. That's only about 18 and a half grams of carbs. And you're going to fire through all that in your workout. Spike the insulin just a little bit, but but then afterwards get some salt and just a little bit, like take a, eat a little bit of orange or something, just about 15 grams of uh, fructose, and that is going to really help kick the insulin level up to be able to build muscle. Um, you know, it, it it's uh, it's really it, it's 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 interesting to watch, and I know some people. They don't have the schedule to be able to do that. I totally understand. I mean, if there's a way that you can look at that schedule and say, okay, I get a 12-hour fast, or I at least can get that, or I can go 14. And if you can at least kind of schedule your workout to where at the end of your workout you're breaking that fast, that's where you're going to get the, the, the most benefit. But don't get me wrong. If you can't do that, you're still going to get crazy benefits you know, breaking your fast at another time versus, you know, not being able to do it um, right after your workout. So uh, totally, you know, keep keep fasting in that, that aspect. Now, one thing that a lot of people have, and even myself, even a year ago, I always thought, okay, you, got, you have to be in this crazy high... Um, uh, caloric surplus to build build muscle. Now I will say, let me let me say I, I touched on this earlier. I said so. There's a difference between building strength and actually building mass and getting size. Okay, as a basketball player myself, I always wanted to gain strength without getting bigger. I wanted to be agile, but I wanted to be really strong, and so. Um, there, there's a difference when people ask that. You know, I think you can keep your caloric intake down a little bit more when you all you're trying to do is build strength. But when you're actually trying to build size and get bigger, you have to be in somewhat of a surplus. Now, I don't agree with a dirty bulk. I never have, and science lately has been proving that a dirty bulk, really there isn't that much of a benefit, and actually, the leaner you are, the more anaerobic you are, and you can actually build muscle quicker. So that whole idea of, hey, I need to add fat on my body to be able to build muscle later is really kind of junk. You know, I like to stay anywhere around that 15% body fat range, like where I'm at right about now, to be able to build. And so, it was funny, <clears throat> my buddy Goody Beats, he was on live last Friday, and we were talking, and and uh, he, somebody said something about eating 4,000 calories, and my original plan when I was sitting here thinking about it, I was like, you know, what when I start my bulk 100 on Monday, What's my nutrition going to look like? And actually, my range was going to be about 4,000 calories. But after the weekend, I started really thinking about it more. And six, seven years ago, when I was training for this event and for this sponsorship, I was eating 5,000 calories a day. But I was able to work out uh, three and a half hours a day. Now, that's crazy, right? Having to work out three and a half hours a day. But I had to to counteract all those calories um, that I was taking in because I was trying to cut fat and build muscle at the same time. So an hour and a half workout, almost an hour and a half of cardio, stair climber, high treadmill, you know, that type of stuff. It was it was miserable. I mean, it was miserable. That is honestly one of the biggest reasons why I didn't work out for two and a half years pretty much after that and gained so much body fat. And I got up to 255 and I was crazy out of shape I mean I just it, it sucked I hated it and so um, you know until I kind of developed that I wanted mindset and kind of changed my life and and you know got things going again and so after kind of reevaluating over the weekend and then thinking about okay here's what my training program is going to look like I'm only going to work out four days a week my workouts 
are going to be extremely heavy loads, 85, 90, well, 80 to 90 percent max loads. I'm only doing about two sets, anywhere between six to 12 reps, just depending on what it is. I'm not trying to go and burn a lot of energy in my workouts, but I am trying to go and tear muscle fiber down. So do I really need to eat 4,000 calories every single day? And I really don't think so. And, and I also need to keep incorporating my 12-hour fast every day to keep that human growth hormone and keep that testosterone spiking. And so um, for myself now, I... I, and now I don't, I'm not doing, I, I take the back, I'm sorry if I said every day about the fast. I'm not doing a 12-hour fast every single day. I'm doing it three days out of the week. And um, those three days are the days that I'm not working out. Because I'm not going to eat as many calories on those days. So on the four days, I'm having right about 30 34 to 3500 calories a day and then with sticking around uh, 50 net carbs so I'm getting about 65 total carbs a day net about 50 and most of them are coming right uh, before my workout because I do more of a targeted keto so I'm taking in my uh, my uh, the pea starch the 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 Archie type supplement beforehand and so, um, but then the days that I'm not working out, I'm not going to eat as much. I'm going to eat about, right about 3,000 calories. And then I'm going to incorporate a longer fast, uh, 12 to a 14 hour fast on those days. to keep spiking and then kind of flush a little bit of glucose out at the same time. And so that's, that's where I really think, especially after last year and being in such a deficit, but incorporating fasting, and my workouts weren't meant um, for necessarily size last year. That that wasn't my workout plan last year. It was more of just cutting, leaning, and I happened to build in that one time frame three and a half pounds of muscle. Over the course of the year, I did six pounds. I gained six pounds of muscle, but in that time where I was only eating 2,000 to 1,800 calories a day for those six months, I gained three and a half pounds of muscle. So um, it's really going to be interesting to see these next 100 days of what, with being in a, a more of a caloric state, and even, even my caloric um, state, so remember I was at 2,200 calories at my baseline? My baseline now is 2,500 calories when I went and retested. So now um, my resting metabolical rate's 2,500. So when I burn, I'm burning about 3,500 calories a day when I do put in a good workout. So I'm not going crazy high in the surplus area. You know, if you were to tell somebody else that's just some regular Joe Blow muscle guy that you're eating exactly what you're burning, they'd be like, you're not going to build any mass. And studies have now shown that if when incorporating this fasting and doing it correctly and finding the timing and taking in the right stuff to break the fast, it, you can gain just as much and you don't have to do a dirty bulk. You don't have to gain body fat to gain more size and muscle. So um, that's kind of where I'm at right now with with my thoughts on fasting. You know, um, as as we do this, I want to wait and see if anybody you can hear me. I'm shaking my shaking my bottle here. I actually have to drink right now. I I don't do whey protein anymore either. I actually have some grass fed beef protein in here. It's double chocolate. Um, it comes from Julian's Bakery. It's uh, paleo thin, and so it's 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 beef protein. Um, and then I have some cinnamon almond butter two tablespoons of that in there so right now is about that time I gotta get that in <laughs> so you're gonna hear me drinking on that but 
you know, I'm going to stay here on Instagram and see if anybody has any questions. About fasting, you know, um, especially for muscle building. I think most people understand and get it when it comes to losing weight and how you can use fasting to lose. But I think, um, especially men, you're scared. You're scared to incorporate fasting while trying to build. And I think that you're kind of hindering yourself to some degree. I think, and I, I now I'm not saying fast every day. I think if you do fast every day while you're muscle building, you're hindering yourself too. But I think there needs to be two, three times a, a week where you extend that period a little bit. Let those cells regenerate. Raise that human growth hormone. Raise the testosterone. Do this naturally. And you'll be shocked on how much size you gain in that time while adding some more calories. Right now I'm taking in um, one and a half grams per body weight of protein. So I'm, I'm 225 pounds now. So I'm taking in about 340 grams of protein a day right now. Um, then I'm doing about uh, three quarters of a gram towards pound of body weight. So I'm doing like, you know, about like 150, 160 grams of fat a day. And then I'm keeping my carbs, you know, like I said, it's right around 65, 70 total, about 50 net carbs a day. That's where I'm at. And I, I'm going I'm to do that for the next 100 days. Well, now we're at 97 days. <laughs> Well, I'm kind of waiting to see if anybody wants to ask questions on my live. Um, again, if you guys want to know a little bit more about, hey, how you doing? Want to know a little bit more about keto? Uh, definitely don't hesitate. Go follow me on Instagram at Fit Keto Cowboy. Um, I also do a lot more other fitness type stuff on my Myler Flex because I know there's some anti people that don't like keto but I still want to help you guys out too also that's where on Myler Flex I have uh, a lot of my speaking engagements and stuff like that going on there uh, also go subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel at Fit Keto Cowboy and also for this for the podcast uh, Myler Flex the letter N podcast Myler Flex and podcast We got people on here. Come on, go ahead, ask away. Um, yeah. My, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> my next um, <clears throat> my next video. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys all the food, all the supplements that I'm going to be taking, all that good stuff for my next YouTube video. I'm filming it right now. Well, looks like people's being shy. <laughs> but, end of the story. <laughs> Basically, I'm going to wrap this podcast up with saying don't be a vegan, at least be a pescatarian at bare minimum. And then also, even if you are trying to build muscle, absolutely incorporate fasting. Break your fast in the right way. If you want to get the most results, break your fast right after your workout when you are insulin sensitive and get a little bit of carbs, get a little bit of salt, get a little bit of fructose in there and you'll definitely get some benefit from fasting and um, trying to build muscle. So I will be back 
next week, next Wednesday. I'm going to stay consistent every Wednesday like I was before six weeks ago. If you guys have any questions, please go ahead, ask away. I'm normally on my Instagram, not on Facebook too much, so go ahead, ask questions. If you're looking for an online trainer too, that's what I do. So you guys have a great week. Um, enjoy yourself. Uh, I think, like I said, it's going to get a little chilly, so bundle up, don't get sick, and uh, keep repping and flexing. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Hey guys, do me a big favor and go follow My Look Flex on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want more videos of the podcast or workout videos, follow the My Look Flexing podcast on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. Till next time, keep repping and flexing.